One of the most tragic stories in rock and hip hop is the accidental overdose of Adam Goldstein, but you may know him better by his stage name, DJ AM. Up to the point of the fatal plane crash that he was involved in with Blink-182 drummer Travis Barker, DJ AM had been sober for 10 years. How did that event and the filming of MTV show Gone Too Far help contribute to the untimely death of DJ AM? Barker and Adam Goldstein, also known as DJ AM, had been visiting Columbia, South Carolina for a gig near the University of South Carolina. After performing the show, the two, joined by friends Chris Baker and Charles Still, boarded a small private jet bound for California. However, the aircraft never made it off the ground. As the plane began speeding down the runway for takeoff, air traffic controllers suddenly saw sparks. The Learjet then began to veer off the end of the runway. It crashed into a perimeter fence and crossed the roadway before slamming into some mounds of raised ground. Then it burst into what the National Transportation Safety Board called a, quote, significant fire. Tragically, Baker, Still, Lemon, and Bland were all killed in the crash, while Barker and Goldstein suffered second and third degree burns. The stage name DJ AM is short for Adam Michael. He had wanted to be a DJ since he was a kid, and he started performing for friends at private parties. He eventually worked his way up to playing clubs in the Los Angeles area. This is where he met Shifty Shellshock from the band Crazy Town. Yes, DJ AM was a part of the 2000 hit Butterfly from that band. Come, my lady, come, come, my lady, you're my butterfly. According to Shifty, he was one of the only sober members in the band at the time. He ended up quitting the band because of all the drug dysfunction. You see, DJ AM had already had a checkered past with drugs and alcohol, began drinking alcohol at the age of 11, and was a heavy drug user by the age of 16. While attending rehab as a teenager at Straight Incorporated, he was physically assaulted by staff. He ended up attacking a counselor and was indicted and released from rehab before his 18th birthday. He continued using party drugs and even while falling in love with the art of DJing. He's quoted as saying, all I did for four years was DJ and smoke He attempted in 1997, but the jammed in his mouth when he pulled the trigger. Using AA, he did eventually get sober and continue his career DJing. DJ AM started dating reality star Nicole Richie in 2003, and his career skyrocketed. He was on an episode of Punked, the Simple Life with Paris Hilton and the Ellen DeGeneres Show. He even got a million dollar deal with Caesars Palace to DJ their nightclub, Pure. A crazy amount of money for a DJ at the time. He scratched for Papa Roach, Will Smith, Babyface, and was even close friends with Steve Aoki. He started collaborating with Travis Barker in June of 2008 under the name Travis DJ AM. They even played the MTV Music Awards that year. But later that month on September 19th, they were on a private jet that crashed at takeoff. The crash killed both pilots and two other passengers on board the plane. The only survivors were DJ AM and Travis Barker. I was ripping off my clothes because that's what my instinct told me to do, but I was still on fire because I was soaked in jet fuel. A driver happened to witness the crash and rushed to their aid as Barker and DJ AM tried to put out the flames. There were two people out of the plane. We're going to presume that yes. was Travis Barker and DJ AM, both trying to put the flames out on each other. They both experienced third degree burns, post-traumatic stress and trauma from the incident. And DJ AM was prescribed anxiety and pain killing medication. After skin grafts and extensive rehabilitation, the duo performed three months later at the Los Angeles New Year's Eve party. Now remember, DJ AM had been sober for almost 10 years. At one point, he even said, at any moment, I'm five seconds away from grabbing someone's drink, downing it, and I'll be smoking one week later. At the same time this was happening, he was filming a show for MTV called Gone Too Far. It was an intervention type show that tried to help people with their addiction. In the show, DJ AM literally holds a and has to walk out because he says it was way too real. In the weeks before his death, his behavior had become erratic and he started missing appointments. His manager and sponsor were so concerned, they flew to New York to see him. While he did not want to see his manager, he did allow his sponsor to come in and then used in front of him. He promised to check himself into rehab after his next gig, but after not returning phone calls, his friends called the police and he was found dead in his apartment, August 28, 2009. His death was deemed to be an accidental suicide caused by oxy, hydrocodone, and other substances. Celebrity doctor Drew Pinsky points to those painkilling medications that potentially opened the floodgates to DJ AM's addiction. Another friend said that plane crash killed him. It just took a year to do it. DJ AM's sister set up the DJ AM Memorial Fund to help people with drug addiction. After his death, they auctioned off things like his record collection and his sneakers in order to raise money for the fund. Unfortunately, I couldn't find any updated information about the DJ AM Memorial Fund. His sister, who ran the fund, passed away from cancer in 2011. DJ AM posthumously won DJ of the Year at the 2009 BET Music Awards. And the collaboration album Fix Your Face from Travis Barker and DJ AM is still a rock and hip-hop classic. 
I mean, I guess I, I get why they call it post-trauma because it, you know, it, it, it was very tough and it's, I have really bad days and I have okay days, you know, it's, it's strange, you know, but I mean, I'm blessed, I'm alive, I'm here.